Hey everybody, it's Mr. X Stitch here and I am back with another YouTube video. This time, a book review and in my humble opinion, arguably the best cross stitch book ever written. Yes indeed, it's the Mr. X Stitch Guide to Cross Stitch. <laughs> Yes indeed, how are you my beloved friends, welcome to this book review. This book review is of the Mr. X Stitch Guide to Cross Stitch, a book that I have written myself, yes indeed, and I'm very proud of this book. It's my love letter to the craft that got me started on my journey to becoming Mr. X Stitch, and well, I thought when I got the opportunity to write the book that this may very well be the only opportunity I have, so I put my all into this book. And in this video, I'm going to break it down for you so that you can understand why it's the only book you'll need. Now, don't get me wrong, many other books are available for you cross stitching fans out there, and I'll link to my book review section so you can have a dive in there and choose for yourself. But if you just need one book to get started, a book that's going to cover all the bases, then just get my book. I know that sounds like I'm really bragging, but I put everything into this book. I've done everything I can in this book to explain to you why cross stitch is so much more than just a hobby. This book will show you what you need to get started and then explain to you why cross stitching is good for you and how you can take it from a humble hobby all the way through to an art form. Let's dive a little deeper into the sections and you'll understand what I mean. The first section is all about tools and materials and I take time to go through the different elements of the things that you will need. Whether it's the even weave fabric that you need to stitch on, the kinds of needles you should use, the kind of flosses that are available and I even dive into some of the various gizmos that are there for you. Including my personal favourite, the John James Twin Pointed Quick Stitch Needle. It's got a hole at the centre and two ends so you can really blitz through some of that stitching if you've got a lot of stitching to do in a short amount of time. The great thing about cross stitch of course is the fact that you don't need many materials to get started. It's not a very expensive hobby to get into and you can really just get going with a budget of less than £5. But if you're serious about your cross stitch and you want to get into it and enjoy doing it there are a few things you can afford to spend money on whether it's good lighting or maybe a floor standing frame something like that that will really make life easier for you and within the tools and materials section I kind of dive into that so you can understand what you want to choose before you get started. The making a start chapter explains basically how to cross stitch. Now I've got tutorials on this channel that will show you the easiest way to start cross stitching and the most versatile way to start cross stitching and those very much explain it to you. One of the great things about cross stitch is it's so simple that actually once you've learned how to start, how to stop and what to do in the middle, basically you can just get going. But within this section, we've got some great photography that will show you how to separate the threads, how to start your stitches, how to finish off what the weedle, the needle technique is. And then I've also got a little bit of an explanation on what to do after the fact, how you can frame your work using the lattice method. Now it's worth pointing out at this point as well that throughout the book, we've got some fantastic photography by my good friend, Stacey Grant. She's just excellent. She does all the photography and art direction for X Stitch magazine as well. And the photographs are fantastic. It makes it clear to see what we're trying to teach you. And I mean, she's just a great stylist. The pictures look so good. Come for the pictures, stay for the words. At the end of the starting section, I discuss one of the most profound questions within cross stitch. What should the back of your work look like? It's something that can strike fear into many a stitcher, but have no fear because I'm here to explain it to you. And that's what I do. Heck, I even throw in a pattern that you can stitch that is designed to show the back of your work so that you can stand out and say to people, here's the back of my work, people. Deal with it. Within each of the following sections of the book, I focus on a particular aspect of cross stitch. Things that are interesting to me. The use of colour, using glow-in-the-dark threads, how to use computer software to design your own pattern, and then stitching outside of the hoop. That is, using materials that aren't just fabric in order to achieve your goals. Now, within each of these sections, there are designs that you can follow, but I also interview somebody within the world of cross stitch who is in kind of experienced in the section that I'm talking about, so that you can get a sense of what directions you can take this. Because there are so many people who start with cross stitch, fall in love with it, and then follow their own creative path. I just want you to know that even if this is the first cross stitch book that you pick up, 
you can plot yourself a trajectory that will take you down a creative path and there's nothing to fear with that we've got some fantastic interviews trust me the first section of the book is all about color obviously color theory is quite important and color is a vital part of cross stitch but within that section as well we also give nods to some of the classic themes within cross stitch flowers nature and then we touch on the meaningfulness of cross stitch as well there's more about that in a subsequent section but one of the things i touch on in this section as well is just the context of needlework and the fact that by taking part in something as simple as cross stitch you're actually enjoying a pastime that has been done for centuries it's something that's part of our cultural heritage and it's no small thing it's a simple craft but you're part of a huge movement that's been going on for a long time and i think it's important for you to know that at the end of the color section we've got an interview with zoe gilbertson someone who comes from a graphic design background and applies these principles to her designs it's a really amazing to see what she does using color and cross stitch and is definitely going to open up your eyes Following on from the colour section, we've got the glow in the dark thread section. Now, I love glow in the dark thread. It looks white, but when the lights go off, it glows. And you can use it for writing hidden messages in things. For instance, you could do somebody a stitch that says, I love you in bright white letters. And in glow in the dark, you can write, not really, on the inside. Or something helpful. I just love glow in the dark thread. There are several designs in this section that make great use of glow in the dark thread and the fact that you can have two different designs, whether it's the daytime or the nighttime. Empire State is a good example of one with a New York skyline. When the lights are off, the stars start shining and you can just see the lights light up in the windows in the buildings. But it's also got my own personal favourite, which is Home Sweet Home Network. The ideal cross stitch for anybody that lives with teenagers. Simply complete the design add your own Wi-Fi password in there, then if you've got anybody who needs internet access, whether it is a grumpy teenager or whether it's an Airbnb guest, whatever it is, you can just have it on the wall, you just point to where the design is, people can get online, they needn't bother you at all. It's a great design, I really love it. It's a really, well, probably one of my favorite in the whole book. So, glow in the dark thread, the section finishes with an interview with Kate Blanford who fuses traditional looking cross stitch with rock and roll lyrics and glow in the dark thread to create some things that are truly badass. Be sure to check her out. Following on from that, we've got the more than a hobby section where I prove to you that cross stitch isn't just something that old ladies do. It's something that can be used as a form of therapy. It's something that can be used as a form of political activism. It most definitely is something that can be used as an art form. Within this section, there are several designs that will help you explore this concept. My personal favourite within this section, a pixelated version of the Mona Lisa, which is really straightforward to do. Stitch it, give it to a friend. If anybody feels that embroidery isn't an art form, you can go, well, I've just cross-stitched you the Mona Lisa, baby. What do you make of that? At the end of this section, we've got a fantastic interview with Lithuanian artist Severia, who cross-stitches on metal, car bonnets, buckets, all kinds of things. Her work was featured at Dismaland, the show that was curated by Banksy a few years ago. She's truly amazing. I'm glad to have her in the book. You're going to love her work. Now, it's one thing to talk about cross-stitch. It's another thing to do a bit of cross-stitch. And then it's another thing to start making your own cross-stitch. And in the design section of the book, I explain the parameters that are involved with cross-stitch design. Cross-stitch is basically constrained by a few different things. The number of colours, the density of the stitches, that is how many stitches per inch are on the fabric, and then the size of the design. And I use pineapples as an example to explore the different effects that you can have, whether you want a tiny one inch pineapple that's gonna be really easy for you to complete but doesn't really look like a pineapple, or whether you want a huge 18 inch pineapple in 50 colors that looks super realistic, but let's face it, might take you a couple of years to stitch. Once you understand these parameters, you can then explore your own creativity and use any of the various cross stitch software that's out there to make your own designs. And that's when your expression can truly become free. For me, finding the cross stitch software was the thing that unlocked my design desires and made it easy for me to then start to make my own patterns. Before then, I had to settle for the designs that other people have made. And while there are many amazing designs out there, once you start making your own patterns, you really go for it. At the end of the section, we've got an interview with Lord Libidan, who is featured in my designer discourse video. 
Lord Liberdan is an excellent designer. Once you see his designs in the book, you will feel inspired to take the matter further. And you should definitely uh, check out the designer discourse video to understand why I call him the Batman of cross stitch. And then finally, we've got the section called Thinking Outside the Hoop, where we look at stitching on different surfaces, whether it's leather bangles, plastic sheets with a grid on them, stitching on metal. The possibilities are endless once you realise that all you need is a grid. And with things like soluble canvas that has the grid on it, you can pretty much stitch on whatever you want these days. So there's some really good ideas to get you going within that section. And then there's an interview with Les Deux Bros, two French designers who are known for their work on chain link fences and outdoor yarn bombing activities. Something that will really get you going. If you've got a chain link fence anywhere near you, go and get yourself some wool, start applying the cross stitches to those, brighten up your neighbourhood, why don't you? So there you have it, the Mr X Stitch Guide to Cross Stitch. Enough sections to teach you how to stitch, to explain why you should stitch, to encourage you to make your own patterns and then to pursue your own artistic expression. Cross stitch is a fantastic craft form. It's sublime, it's soul soothing, it's really good for you to do and I hope that this book will give you everything that you need to get started. Don't forget that you can get signed copies of the book from the X Stitch magazine website. Bonk. And I would encourage you to get it. I mean, heck, get it out of a library if you need to. But have a little look at it. See what you think. Get in touch with me and let you know. It's my love letter to Cross Stitch. It's designed to give you the opportunity to start stitching. The designs range from small designs that you can do in a day to designs that will take you several weeks and have got nearly 100 colours in them. There's something in there for everyone. And I've put my heart into it. I can't really explain it any better than that. You know, I just... It was a book I wanted to write, it came together, it looks good, it's got everything you need to know in it. So hopefully you'll feel like you want to have a go with it. So yeah, there you go. That was the Mr X Stitch Guide to Cross Stitch. Maybe the best cross stitch book you've ever read. Definitely the best cross stitch book you've ever read, written by a man who's talking to you now. Feel free to get a copy of it. Feel free to leave a comment below if you've read the book, if you like the book, if you want to know any more about the book. Or even if you just wish, I'd stop talking about the book. Are there any other books you'd like me to recommend? I am always willing to review cross-stitch books for you, my beloved friend, so let me know. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Feel free to like it if you like it. I'm happy with that, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Happy stitching.